tonight, we're going to, I want you to go to the book of Luke chapter 19. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about, I don't want the Lord in my business. I don't want God in my business. I just don't want God in my business. That's what we're going to teach on tonight. I don't want God in my business. You know, there are folks out there that don't want God in their business. And you're going to be surprised that it's not just all the law see, all right? Luke chapter 19. And hopefully, those of you that are ministering the word on any capacity won't be afraid of the cry of people that are religious and pervert the gospel, all right? Now, in the book of Luke chapter 19, everybody got it? Verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds, and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Occupy. The word occupy means to do business until I come. That's what, so the scripture is telling us as Christians that we should do business until Jesus comes. In another passage, he told us to go into the vineyard. Same thing. And tell people God. In another passage, in the book of Corinthians, he told us that he raised us up to, to be able to reconcile the world back to him. In other words, the church is supposed to be about Jesus' business. Church, and, and, you know, it's amazing how there are preachers out there, and we're going to say some things tonight might be hard, but it's right. There is not one preacher, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, that the Lord have sent for this season and time with, that would tell you that the Lord should not be involved in politics. I want you to understand again, there's not one preacher that the Lord have sent that would tell you that Christians should have no business staying out of politics. Now let me explain this to you. Involved in politics, standing up for what's right. And the reason why we're dealing with this tonight, because it's so prevalent, because there are preachers out there, people got the idea that the church and state are supposed to be separated. Nowhere in the Bible you will find that God or his Christ said that the church and state were separate. But you will find religion said it. You will find, as a matter of fact, if you go back to the Old Testament, you will find out that the king, the leaders in the Old Testament that represented God, the ones, there was two types of kings, ones that sought God and the other ones that did, didn't want nothing to do with God. Ain't, no, from Genesis, there's not a scripture. I don't care where, where you get it from. There, there's, if you got this right Bible, now these Amplified and these, all these other mess, you'd be surprised what they said. But God never said all his Christ that he intended for a separation. God intended for people that rule over people to be just ruling in the fear of God. That's what God intended. Now, I want you to go to the book of um, Samuel right quick. Book of Samuel. God intended. And the reason why, because you all, some of you all need to grow up and come out of fear so the Lord can use you. Now, let me tell you something. Persecution won't kill you. In other words, what we're saying here, you ain't leaving here until the Lord get ready for you to leave. Paul didn't die until it was, it was ready for him to go home because he was doing the work of the Lord. Now, listen to this now. In the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 23, verse 1, it says this. Now, there, these be the last words of David. <laughs> David, the son of Jesse, said, And the man who rules upon high, the anointed of God, and that's what I want to hear from, the anointed, everybody anointed, of Jacob, God of Jacob, and the sweet psalms of Israel, the Spirit of the Lord spake unto 
under me, and his words were in my mouth. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me, he that rules over men must be what? Ruling in the fear of God. You know, the reason why religious folk and even false preachers do not want people to speak out as they said, pertaining to politics, is because they don't want people to do right. Now let me ask you something. What do you think the Bible is for? Do you think the Bible is for preachers and not presidents? Do you think the Bible is for preachers and not kings or queens? Do you think the Bible is just for Christians and not for princes? People, that's the stupidest thing that you can ever hear. And not one time, not one time did God, Christ, or the Holy Spirit ever told anybody that God separate us where we come here and hear the word and go back up out there and live like the devil or any way we want to live. Even common sense itself will tell you, why you come here to get the word? Why do you come here to get the word? Okay. To go out there and live it. So wait a minute. If you come here to get the word, and then when you go out there, you don't have to live the word, that's hypocritical. And we still got preachers in this season, so-called preachers, self-appointed preachers, that actually tell people that church and state should be separated. Heaven is not separated. God ain't separating the heaven for the wicked. If you don't want to live right, you ain't going to heaven. God said you just ain't going to get in it. And, and Christ didn't come and say, I'm going to let you into heaven even though you don't follow me. No, he said if you want to go to heaven, then you have to follow me. Now, wait a minute. That's why you won't find one scripture in the Bible that will even incline that way that God intended for man to live one way when they come to the sanctuary and live another way when they go back out there. Or live another way when you get elevated. The Bible says he that rules over men must be just. And then it says ruling in what? The fear in people that's not the law. That's one of the book of the prophets. And nowhere in the Bible will you find that God said that our presidents or, or tell anybody that they should not be able to stand and speak out against politics. Let me say this to you, you know what you're going to find. You'll find out that a preacher have no business in politics. You know why? We got a higher calling. Our call, our, a preacher's calling, if you've been called by the Lord, if you're in the right place and you've been called by the Lord, you don't want to be president. Why? You got the highest calling. You got If, if you're a real preacher, if you've been anointed by Jesus Christ, if you've, been, if you've been raised up, if, if the same, we're not talking about being born again, the same king that it talks about in Ephesians chapter 4, if he gave gifts to you, if he raised you up and placed you in the five-fold ministry, you ain't got no business being president, male, or whatever. I don't care what the religious people say. I'm looking at the Bible. You ain't got no, why? Because the Bible says when you, you got that kind of high calling. Don't you, you don't entangle yourself with the affairs of this life. What does it mean? It means to get all tingled up. You know, you speak out against the why? Because you speak out against wickedness and you speak up for righteousness. So let me tell you what the wicked tries to do. The wicked and religious folk and ignorant folk tries to do. They try to keep you down when you stand up for the Bible. Long as you come here and talk about Jesus in these folk walls, that's fine. But don't you talk about him out there tomorrow. People, when you become a, wait a minute, but they don't understand that not only does Jesus own the mall, he owns the material that actually you got to make, build a wall with. But they're ignorant of that. And let me tell you something else too. Don't ever think, don't you ever think that ignorant people got power. Let me say, I don't care whether they're in a pulpit or in the back of the sanctuary.
where we're up. Ignorance do not give you power. When a person is ignorant of the word, they have no power. In the book of Hosea 4, 6, the Bible said, my people perish for what? The lack of knowledge. So if you ignorant, how you think you, now you talking, are you going to stand up for something, and then it is going against the word, and you think the Lord is with you? No, he's not. You don't have to, folks, you don't have to be afraid of these people with turn around and call them. You don't have to be. And we got a bunch of them, just like other folks, that stand up and teach you their tradition. and their, Jesus had to uh, deal with them. So let's go to the book of Luke, and let's see how Jesus dealt with false preachers, false prophets, and folk that lie, folk that tell lies because somebody else told them, and it, it's not true. That's why you need to study, all right? And the purpose is to help you to stand, having done what? All the stand, stand there for but the only way you're going to stand, you got to know this word. you got to study and be ready so you can show yourself a, an approved workman unto God, and you won't be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. In other words, when you tell the truth, you don't care about a million people standing up against you. You told the truth. Man ain't going to get you in heaven. Stevens, Stevens got up and told the truth, and they stoned him. Where's Stevens at now? And the ones that stoned him, if they didn't get saved, you know where they're at now? I know one place they're not at on this earth. So if they didn't get saved, they in hell. The same folk that throw the rock at him. And that's what you want to come to a place of understanding, that our purpose is to serve Jesus. Well, how we serve Jesus? By serving, by doing his word, by standing up. And everybody that call themselves, whatever they call themselves, do not mean that that's what they are, right? Now, in the book of Luke, chapter 11, we're going to teach on tonight how Jesus dealt with false preachers, how Jesus dealt with false people that said they were something and they were really not because Jesus had to deal with them, just like you and I have to deal with them, all right? So you won't be afraid when you stand up and you rightly divide the word of truth. The purpose of the church, the reason why the Lord left us here it's not to have anniversary and all this kind of mess. The Bible says the Lord left us here to reconcile the world back to. That's why we. That's why we're here. And when the Bible said, Occup Jesus said, "Occupy, do business till He come." When Jesus come back, He gonna look at these so-called ministries that did whatever they wanted to do but didn't do the will of God. He gonna look at these preachers that wouldn't tell people the truth, wouldn't teach people the truth. And people died and went to hell because they thought they were going to heaven. Why? Because they were listening to blind leaders. When you are blind, when you, are, when you listen to a blind leader, the Bible says you're going to fall in the ditch as well as them. All right? So Jesus had to deal with these folk that called themselves leaders, but really they were not leaders of God. Any question before we move on? All right. Now, in the book of Luke, beginning with, let's start with verse 45. All right? Okay, let's go back to 44. And then we'll go back to 42. All right? Listen to this now. Jesus is dealing. You don't hear these in many of these churches here. You know why? Because it shows us. It shows us who we really are. All right? In the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 43, it says, that Jesus said, Woe unto you, Pharisees, for you love the upper seats in the synagogue and the greetings in the marketplace. Jesus had to deal with these so-called religious leaders. And let me tell you what kind of character they had. They always wanted to sit on the front seat. They always wanted to sit in the best places, whatever meet. They, they were up in, the, in pride. They always wanted to be seen. They always wanted someone to be talking about them. They always wanted to be out on the scene, not to preach Jesus, but to elevate themselves. So Jesus said, wait a minute here. Warn to you, Pharisees, for you love, they love, you love, you get mad if you can't sit in the front seat. You get highly upset if someone invite, invite you to a dinner or something. If you don't sit in the best place, you get angry. He said, that's why they were up it. He says, and folk, he's talking about the Pharisees were leaders. They were leaders of that day. And our season in time, they would be preachers. They were called preachers, 
They, that's what they read. It says, Upmost cease in the synagogue and greeting in the marketplace. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisee, hypocrites. Wait a minute. Scribes and Pharisee, what? Hypocrites. Wait, wait a minute. What is he saying here? He's calling these folks. Now, they are religious people, supposed to be religious leaders. But notice what he called them, hypocrites. Why? Because they were doing, saying one thing and doing something else. That's what they were doing. All right? And Jesus knew it. It says, For you are as graves which appear not. Now, wait a minute. He's, what he's doing, he's distri dis describing the character of these hypocritical leaders. He said, You're graves where people can't see that you're really graves. They don't really see who you are because you hide your real self. You just like you can be walking on a grave. Not knowing that a hundred years ago a body was put placed in there. But you don't know it. He's saying, wait a minute, these Pharisees are like that. These hypocritical leaders are like that. They had their own club. He says, For you are grave which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. So now he's saying that you're leaders, but you don't know, you're not real leaders. How can I identify a person that's not a real leader sent by God? They don't preach the whole gospel. They preach perverted gospel. They caught up in tradition. They caught up in their own theology. They caught up in the world, but they don't preach the whole truth. Why? Because they're not of God. The Bible talk tells us in the book of Corinthians that they're ministers of Satan. The Bible says that just like the angel of light, Talking about Satan, have changed, transformed himself as an angel of light. Even so, his ministers, people, everybody will stand up in a pulpit, don't mean they say. Everybody you meet don't mean they say. If a real preacher is going to always direct you to the Bible, and it's going to be rightly divided, why do you think the Lord told us to study so we can rightly divide the word? Every, uh, the, all these so-called preachers that run around here, I don't care how many they are, I don't care what kind of titles they have. If I run into a preacher, I don't care how long they've been preaching, and they are not equipped in the word, I know they're not sent by the Lord. You know why? The Lord don't make mistakes. He don't lie. The Lord just don't lie. In other words, how are you going to know them? By the word, by the fruit they bear. If, I, if I've been called by the Lord... I am his ambassador, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to write the divine to you all. Why? I'm not going to change it. I, people, there's not one, the Pope, that so-called Pope, don't have a, he don't have no authority to change this Bible. And some people worship him. What? I ain't worshiping no man. I ain't, I ain't kissing no man's hand. The only man's hand I want to kiss is Jesus. I ain't kissing nobody else. I don't care who you are. I don't care how large you cry. It don't make me no different. Why? Because I know you put on your pants just like I do. And I know I know one of this. If you a man, you ain't got no business wearing no skirt. <laughs> Not today. So I, I don't care what folks say. When, when you, if you're a real Christian, you don't ever put people, what they say, above this word. The reason why some of you do it, because you're karma minded and you, some of you just of the devil, all right? You, you ain't saved, all right? But listen to what he said. Now, Jesus is dealing with these leaders now that we call Pharisees and scribes, okay? Are you, any questions before we move on? And you going if those of you that minister the word at times, whether it's on Facebook or whatever, you deal with them. They come on Facebook and they'll give you a scripture. You know what? Let me tell you something. There is not one scripture in the Bible that contradicts another scripture. So wait a minute. If you got the true meaning of a scripture and you speak it, and somebody else come against you and say that's wrong, you tell them, prove it. But I don't want you to prove it by your own church doctrine. I want you to prove it by this word. You show me in this word, and let me tell you what you can do. If you Don't be afraid to do this. If you, if you do this, and they give you the word that they believe, you can take the word they gave you and show that they are 
mistaken. They're lying. They don't understand what the word said. Why? Because if you got the right understanding of it, God didn't say something over here for us to do and then turn the whole thing 180 degrees around over there. He didn't do that. Everything the Lord gives us is right. So what, if you study, if you study like you said, and you be guided by the Holy Spirit, you don't have to be afraid of nobody when you give that word. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will always help you to rightly divide the word of truth. All right? Now listen to this. It says this. And see, that's some of y'all, you're, you're bound by letting people make you afraid. Why? Because they, oh, I don't mind being challenged. Challenging stirs me up. And then, oh, oh, okay, okay, it's this simple. Either I'm right or I'm wrong. If I'm right, I'm going to stand. If I'm wrong, I'm going to repent and change. So you ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> you ain't got nothing on me. You ain't got nothing. If I made a mistake, I'm going to change. You know, either way, I'm going to get help. Either way, you might not want to give me help. I'm going to get, why? Because I was sent you to tell people the truth. Get, not give people my doctrine or whatever, but to tell them the whole truth, all right? And that comes from studying and obeying the Lord, all right? Now, listen to what he said now. He says, then, verse 45, then answered one of the lawyers and said unto them, Master, thou sayest thy reproaches us also. Wait, so one of the lawyers, now let me tell you what the lawyers were. The lawyers were um, educated folk. They were college pe people that went to their colleges and stuff like judges, leaders of the world. But they were also equipped on a certain level of knowledge of the scroll. So now Jesus is talking. Now he was talking to the Pharisees. But I want you to notice the lawyers got offended. All right? Some of the lawyers were scribes. Not all of them. But they were educated people of the world. All right? And notice what they said. He, they said, Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto them, Master, thou sayest, thou reproaches us also. And he said, Woe unto you also, you lawyers, for you take, you lay men with burdens grievous to be borne, and you yourself touch not the burden with one of your fingers. Now he's saying to these lawyers, he said, let me tell you what you do. You make it hard for other folk, and you make it easy for you. You, you, make, you, make, you make it hard for other folk. That's what he's talking about. You make people go through the wringer, but then you have it easy. You make it easy for yourself. You make people pay, pay this high cost insurance, but then you got free insurance. Because you, 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 you put burdens on people that you yourself don't want. You make sure that they're going to tote the wagon or pull the wagon and you're going to ride in it. You ain't going to help them. Now, this is what some of the characters of these lawyers that Jesus was talking It's right here in your Bible. It's right here. Listen to what he says. He says, Woe unto you also, you lawyers, for you lay men with burdens grievous to be bore, and you yourself touch not the burden with one of your fingers. You know what? I was looking at... Um, they were talking one day on the news, and they was talking about the wall that President Trump want to build to help protect us. And a lot of these folks saying, I don't want the wall, but a lot of them got fences. A lot of them got walls and stuff. A lot of them got, you know, it's a lot, you know, you know, a lot of these leaders here, when you go to their houses, they got eight and ten foot walls, but they don't want you to have a wall. It's amazing how folk, and then you got people too scared to speak out because they don't want nobody to talk about them. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth. How are you going to deny me of safe Then you got it? Hi, wait a minute. Hi, people, it's all around. It's all over here. And the Lord, 
Jesus came. See, some of y'all think that Jesus came to deal with the people. I'm going to say it like this. In the church. He came to deal with all of us. He came to deal with, he came to deal with the doctors, the lawyers, the kings, the queens. He came to deal with the street people, the home. He came to deal with everybody. And Jesus told, matter of fact, the Bible said we were all sinners. Every one of us. So he came to get all of us straight. He didn't, just because you had a king robe on and a crown, that don't mean you righteous. That don't mean you all knowledge either. So Jesus came to deal with those people. That's why they didn't, that's why preachers didn't like him. They're like, preachers ain't gonna like you if a preacher is not telling the truth. If a Christian not living the truth, they ain't gonna like you. They ain't gonna like you. You know why? Because you standing up for the truth. When you got this word, you don't let them back you down. When you understand what the Bible says, you stand on what the word says. And let me tell you something. The Bible says even if you be reproached for the truth, you should be happy. Because the spirit of glory rests upon you. You just make sure you're telling the truth. That's what you do, all right? That's what he, now, he's dealing with these folks now, all right? He says, he says, Woe unto you, for you build sepulchers of the prophets, and your fathers... <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, let's deal with it. Okay, why... Why Jesus brought in, you build, you build, you build a casket, we'll say it this way, so be all you can understand, of the prophets, and your father killed them. Let's go to Jeremiah 26 for a minute. Where we going? Why, why, why would folk kill prophets? Why would folk kill people that stand up for the, let's go back, let's go back and look at Jeremiah. Uh, just one of the prophets, you can read all of them. But let's go back and look at Jeremiah, one of God's prophets, all right? Let's, let's see whether Jeremiah got involved in politics. We want to see whether God led Jeremiah into politics or not, all right? We just want y'all to see so y'all won't be ignorant. You know why? There's no power in ignorance. When I run into ignorant people, I know the, Lord, I know the Holy Spirit ain't speaking through them. Why? Because the Holy Spirit going to lead and guide us into all truth. He ain't going to tell no lies. He ain't going to make up nothing, all right? And the Holy Spirit knows what he's talking about. That's what he does. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 26, listen to this now. We're going to take our time. Everybody got it? Jeremiah, use your index. Jeremiah, chapter 26, verse 1 says, In the beginning of the reign of Je Jehokan, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak unto all the cities. Wait a minute now, of Judah. Wait a minute, I thought God didn't deal in no politics. I thought God, God don't lead preachers into politics now. I thought God don't lead men of God, women of God into politics. But I'm, I'm finding out God told Jeremiah, I want you to go into the house of the Lord and speak to the cities. Wait a minute. That means I don't care the governors, the kings, the princes, queens, whoever. <laughs> Listen to what he said. He said, Thus says the Lord, stand in the courts of the Lord's house and speak unto all the cities of Judah, which come to worship in the Lord's house, all the words that I command thee to speak unto them, diminish not a word. He says, if you be they, if so be they will hearken, and him, and turn, excuse me, every man from his evil way, that I may repent me of this evil, which I purpose to do unto them because of the evil of their doings. And thou shalt say unto them, thus says the Lord, if you will not hearken to me to walk in my law, which I have set before you, to hearken to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I sent unto you, both waking, both rising up early. He's saying, well, let me read, um, let me finish reading this. And sending them, but you have not hearkened. Then will I make the house of Shiloh, and will make the city a curse to all the nations of the earth. Now, wait a minute. Now, that, that don't sound like a God that don't get into politics. 
because God is not only talking about destroying the synagogue, he's talking about tearing down your building, your houses, your king's court, the whole city. Wait a minute. You telling me that God using a preacher to do that? He sure is. And nowhere in the Bible you find out God ever stopped preachers from doing it. The reason why we all here is the reason why we still here is to tell not only you all, but the government and everybody else when they wrong. That's what we're supposed to do. And I ain't backing down from none of them. I don't care what these weak-minded, jelly bag money-hungry preachers want. I'm not preaching for money. I'm not even preaching for prestige or power. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. I'm going to tell you the truth. And ain't no way in the world you're going to convince me that we're not supposed to do it because the Lord told us to preach the word. He told us to preach the word. He told us to reprove, reprove, and other things. we get that later, right? Let me get back on this. Listen to this now. It says this. It says, So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speak these words in the house of the Lord. Now it came to pass when... Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak unto all the people that the priests and the prophets and all the people took him saying thou shall oh we're going to give you a dunner oh we're going to pray we're going to pay you oh we're going we're gonna to bless you no they said you going to die but look wait a minute now, look who said it I want you to take a good look at who said it now, all right? Let's read this again. It says, Now it came to pass when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak unto all these people, that the priests and the prophets said unto And all the people took him, saying, Thou shalt surely die. So the priests and the prophets, along with the people, said, We're going to kill you. Do you think that they were going to kill Jeremiah because Jeremiah told them, y'all doing good. Jeremiah told them, y'all all right. Jeremiah t- told them, God ain't going to bring nothing on y'all. Do you think Jeremiah told them, you know what, the Lord just told me y'all blessed. You think that's why they're going to kill him? <laughs> no, he told them the truth. Listen, okay, let's read on. It says, why has thy prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant. And all the people were gathered against Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the princes of Judah heard these things, then they came up front, up from the king's house unto the Lord's house, and sat down in the entrance of the new gate of the Lord's house. Then spake the priests and the prophets unto the princes and to all the people, saying, This man is worthy to die, for he has prophesied against the city, this city, as you have heard with your ears. Then spake Jeremiah to all the princes and to all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and against the city all the words of words that you have heard. Therefore now uh, amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God and the Lord will repent him of the evil that he has pronounced against you. Now I want you to understand this. God do not like evil. And when you got leaders that lead people away from the Lord, away from his word, God, he don't care whether you're in the White House the capital, or your own house. God going to speak out against you. When you got, you call yourself a leader, but you don't want to obey the word of the Lord. You don't even want Jesus' name mentioned in your building. And you got the material from God to have your building built. Because everything was created by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, wait a minute. But you got the audacity to stand up and tell me I got to do what you said do when the Bible said I don't. Well, we've got so-called preachers and Christians, so-called Christians running around here saying, you know what? We're supposed to do what the state says versus what the Bible says. 
My Bible don't say that, folks. My Bible do not say that. And that's why you got these preachers and all these presidents all caught up in homosexuality, promoting Trent lesbianism. That's an Obama. That's why you got a whole bunch of these hypocrite pre Christians running around here saying, I don't see nothing wrong with it. You know why? Because they are not promoting God's work or Christ's work. They are doing, they are, they are being guided by the devil. And the moment you stand up for what's right, they want to condemn you. And some of you in here are so sympathetic with the devil that you and him are twin brothers and sisters. What that mean? You, you, what you will do, you will condemn the righteous and promote the wicked. But the, see, that's when the Bible says that those of you that do that, when you justify the wicked and condemn the just, God himself said your prayer is abomination. And you can't tell me that all this stuff that's happening in America is happening because everybody's God's people. You can't tell me that. You, uh, when you read your Bible, every nation, every nation that obeyed God in this season, that obeyed Christ, God kept them. He blessed them. I don't care what the enemy, there's not one nation that followed God from the Old Testament to the New Testament that God didn't work on their behalf. You know why? They obeyed the word. But when the people start leaving the word, all kind of things started happening. All the devil started having his way, destroying people. people wait a minute. The devil come to do what? Steal? Kill? Look around. Look, I, you know what? Nowhere in the Bible will you find where God, a, a, a godly nation, was following the laws of God, and they were under persecution. The Lord always delivered them. Why? Because, see, the Bible said righteousness always exalts a nation. But when you get leaders that are in sin, when you get leaders listening to lies, the Bible said all of their followers are wicked, every one of them. Why? Because they ain't following the word. And then they want to make it, then they talk about mother nature. There is no mother nature. There never have been a mother nation. My Bible tells me that my creator created everything. And mother wasn't involved in it. So when you get, you know why these folk do that? Because they don't want to own up to, the, to Jesus. Why? Because then you got to follow this word. What folk want to do, they want to do what they want to do and get away with it. But none of them going to heaven. Let me tell you something. Just because you said this brother is right, don't mean he's going to heaven. Why? Because he ain't going to heaven based on what you said. He going to heaven based on what? These folk, what they do, they promote each other. They strengthen the hand of each other. And j that's why you got a lot of these preachers saying so-and-so in heaven. I told y'all to ask them, how you know? Did you go? When you been there? They don't know. Half of them ain't going. Why? Because let me tell you something. One thing you understand is this. You don't know tomorrow unless the Lord reveal it to you. See, the only thing we were sent to do is tell y'all the truth. Not make up the truth, because the truth is already here. Our job is to tell you what's in the Bible, and then let you decide whether you want to follow it or not. That's our job. And when you do it the right way, you don't have to fear no man. That's why Jesus said, don't fear people. When you tell folk the truth, you stand up on it. Ain't no cry going to persuade me any question, but we move on. Jesus. All right, let's move on. This is what he said. Now, Jesus is dealing with these religious folk here. He's saying, truly, you bear witness that you allow the, the, the deeds of your father, for they indeed kill them, and you build their support. How, you, how was they building their support? By supporting what their fathers taught them that was not right. Do you know that's why Jesus had to come into the temple and drive out the money changers? You know why? When God, when God first ordained and had them to build a temple, the temple was not for the purpose of raising money. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of what? For all people. But they had made it a money, look around today, made it a money gimmick. That's what they did. And Jesus went in there and drove every one of them out. And, and then he told them why. He told him exactly. He didn't back down from any of them. Why? 
because he was coming to do the Lord's will. And you know something, like I keep telling y'all, it's amazing how we had all these religious leaders and God didn't use none of them. He sent a man. Ananias, Cephas, Sapphira, all these religious leaders back then, even Nicodemus. And you know what? He didn't use one of them. He had to send Jesus to redeem us. And that's why I'm following Jesus. I ain't following no man or did I'm, I'm following his word. I, I'm, I don't, I don't, people, I'm following the gospel. I'm going to study the word, pray and ask the Lord to guide me. And I'm going to stand up for what's right. I'm not backing down from nobody or anybody. Any question for him? Oh, I'm fired up. Why? That's what I'm supposed to be. And if you save, you ought to be stirred up. You don't let folk, fool. we just told you, ignorance. When you got ignorance, it caused you to perish. That's why I said my people perish for the lack of knowledge. So if you're dealing with someone and they give you a scripture and that scripture is taken out of context, they ignorant. So why should you be upset with them? No, you, what you do, you should do like uh, Priscilla and Aquila did with, um, with uh, Apollos, yeah. What you, what you do? You show them the way more plain. Wait a minute. What that scripture, that scripture don't mean what you're saying. Let me tell you what that scripture means. That scripture means something entirely different. No scripture, no scripture in the Bible contradicts another scripture. If you come upon, upon a scripture that seems to do, be that way, it's because of a lack of understanding. What you do then? Stop. Stop until you get understanding. You know why? If you don't, you do it, you're going to be ashamed. Somebody's going to show you up, all right? Whenever you write, let it the word of truth. You don't have to worry about being ashamed. But when you don't, somebody's going to come back and say, you know what? What you said wasn't right. What you said was taken out of context. Any questions as we go on? We're trying to help y'all get bold as lions so you can be real soldiers and stand up for the God. The reason why you're here is so you can be trained to minister to the world and help the world to be reconciled back the laws to God. Get them in this word, all right? Let's move on now, all right? We ain't finished yet. It says this. It says, Therefore also, says the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall what? Slay and kill, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be... Now, Jesus walked in the earth. He didn't say what, he, what they did in the past. He said, I will send them. So he's saying this is going to take place in the future. During our day, apostles and pro real prophets and real apostles that stand up and bold enough to tell you exactly what the Bible says and don't blink an eye. Preachers that's going to be right, that the Lord going to raise up, that's going to stand up and say, wait a minute. The Bible says we should do it this way. That's why the world don't want to hear you. That's why religious people don't want nothing to do with you. Why? Because religious people are hypocrites. They want to be seen, but they don't want to be, they don't want you to see them in their real life. Why? Because if you see them in their real life, you're going to find out that you know what? These folk ain't right. They need to be delivered. And what you do then? You get a chance to minister the word. You don't back down from them. You minister. If you know the truth, why are you running? Why are you afraid if you done told the truth? Huh? When I was growing up, you know, if I told the truth, most of the time I didn't get a whooping. I got a whooping when I lied. If I told the truth, most of the time my, my father would let me slide. It's when I told a lie. And you know what it taught me? A lie is punishable. <laughs> the truth is a way of escape. That's why the Bible says a lie is just for a moment. But the truth is everlasting and it brings deliverance. Somebody ought to shout and praise the Lord. Oh, gee. Listen, listen when he, let's move on. He said this. He says, from the blood of Abel, uh, from the blood of Abel until the blood of Zechariah, which perished between the altar and the temple. That's in Zechariah 1, where they killed one of God's prophets in the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this. Jesus is saying that the generation was going to pay for even what was done 
back then. Because they're doing the same thing now. Now, verse 52 says this. Woe unto you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, we're dealing with these. As we said, lawyers were judges, um, educated college people, people that had, you know, like a high degree of status in worldly life. But they wouldn't tell people the truth. They would lie. They would cover up stuff. This is what he said they do. It says, warn to you lawyers, for you have taken away the keys of knowledge. You, in, you, don't, you, know, you don't take away the truth, what's really going on. And you enter not in yourself. And them, and them that were entering in, you hinder. In other words, that's why, I want you to look at this now. Look at, look at what we've been, this nation been through. Okay. I, it's amazing how they talk about one part of it. Okay, I'm just going to tell you this. They want to crucify Donald Trump. But they let Hillary go. They want to expose everything he did. But they cover up everything she did. Do you think because the judges let her go, that that judge going to let her go? You a fool if you are. Let me tell you something. Man is limited with power. But let me tell you, when you don't feel the Lord, you don't care until that day. But let me tell you something. I don't care whether you Donald Trump. I don't care whether you whoever. I don't care whether you who you are. One day you're going to die. And one day you're going to meet the real maker. And you're going to be judged by what you do on this earth. You ain't getting away with nothing. But I want you to look at the corruption. You know why? Because demons and devils are in control. Well, what are Christians supposed to do? We're supposed to be standing up against this. If Donald Trump did wrong, he ought to, we ought to tell him he did wrong. If Hillary did wrong, she ought, it ought to be told she did wrong or whoever. We, as, look at the, how weak the church is. That's why the church ain't got no power. The, the church ain't got no power at all, huh? Why? Because, see, you don't have power unless you're walking in the truth. Jesus said it this way, I, I'm not just the way, but then I'm the truth. Wait a minute, I'm not, you, you can't say you walking in the way and you're not walking in truth. You're a liar. Some of you like to be deceived. I'm not. I take this word literally, and I use it to be my eyesight. So let me tell you this, I don't mind you telling me I'm judging, because I'm going to judge according to, the, I'm not scared of your judgment. I'm, I'm going to judge you by the word. If the word, if I look at you and you walking in wickedness, it's because you are wicked. I'm not going to be afraid to tell you are. I'm, I'm going to tell you you need to be delivered. If you're walking in righteousness, I'm going to tell you it's because of Jesus Christ. Because we can't walk in righteousness except by him. So I want you to understand this. I'm not in a delusion. I'm not deceived. The Bible says those of you that don't have a love for the truth, you're going to be deceived. I'm not going to be deceived. Why? I'm going to believe this word. I'm going to believe this word. Now, all this stuff going on here, people, how many of you think the Holy Ghost is doing it? Wait a minute, though. Okay, but wait a minute. Religious folks say, you go to church, you hear the truth on Sunday, then go out there and live like the devil on Monday. That's what religion, oh, okay, religious preachers say, I'm going to tell you the truth, but then when I get out there, I'm going to change it. You know what? The Lord going to hold every, us preachers, us preachers, the Lord going to examine us more closely. You know why? We supposed to be examples. And let me tell you all something. I don't care if a preacher was dead 200 years ago. They going to be judged by what they did. Just like the preachers now, they going to be judged. I don't care how many Hollywood preachers you got. Hollywood ain't going to judge them preachers. He is. The Lord going to judge us. And our job is to tell you all what the Bible says, not what we want to, but to tell you exactly, help you to understand the truth and walk it out and don't be afraid of nobody. Why? Because, see, it's the Lord that's going to judge us, not people. People might put their opinion on us, but it's the God of his word. Hold on. Why are you afraid? You know why those of you in here are afraid? Because you're still in wickedness. You still, you, you haven't committed your life.
life to the Lord. The moment you commit your life to the Lord and purpose in your heart to do what the Lord said, you know what he does? What he says. He strengthens you. He gives you strength so you can stand. So when these folks start telling you that ain't the way and the words say it's the way, because they tried to do Jeremiah that same way. They tried to stop Jeremiah, Isaiah. He said, all the prophets, the, the government didn't like it. Why? Because God sent the prophets to the government to tell them what they were doing wrong. And that's why no way in the Bible did the Bible ever, God did not intend for, the, for us to be separated from his law. I'm not talking about the Old Testament law. Let me, we, we don't follow the law under the Old Testament. We follow Jesus Christ, the New Testament. That's what, in other words, what I'm telling you is this. You don't be a, become a leader of a nation and put down this Bible. That's what's wrong now. No, you pick up the Bible. I, I'm, I'm tired of wicked persons, people leading us. I'm t you, why can't a real Christian lead us? I'm not talking about a word. I'm talking about a real born-again Holy Ghost field. Why can't we have a Holy Ghost field president? You know why? Because the devil don't want it, want it and wicked folk can't stand it. You know why? Because they can't do what they want to do. Because when you got a president that's filled with the Holy Spirit, oh, Jesus, it's going to be hot in all, all states, not just a few states, all right? Listen to this. But then the people going to be blessed. People, people, can you imagine having a president and Republicans and, and, and Democrats that are filled with the Holy Ghost? Can you imagine that? For, and these preachers that preach that lie, they are wicked. They ain't right. They false preachers. That's what they are. They are and they have no scripture to back you up. And they can't stand the truth. Ooh, Jesus. Any question before we move on? <laughs> Go ahead. Apostle, um, verse 52, and it says, Woe unto the lawyers. Would that be similar to what's taking place in Florida where you got the lawyers that are trying to remove truth of the ballots to interject lies? You know, anybody that tries to remove the truth is in that category. Not just lawyers here, but I want you to understand, y'all need to understand, there's some, we got wicked preachers. We got so people, not, not all preachers are wicked. You got preachers that are going to stand up for the truth. But don't you think every preacher you run into is righteous? Because let me tell you something. The righteous preachers love the truth. The wicked preachers can't stand it. You know why? It condemns it. Look at the Pharisees. Why do you think the Pharisees couldn't get along with Jesus? Why? Because Jesus told the truth. Jesus didn't cater to one club and then put down another. He put down all the clubs. He told them all what they were doing wrong. And that's why, let me tell you something. You all can be deceived if you want to, but there's not one preacher that's going to heaven that deceived people or lied. There's not one preacher that's going to heaven that decided to do it their way and not his way. They're not going. I don't care whether they're gone, whether they're coming, it's not going to happen. That's why the Lord told us to preach the gospel of Jesus. Tell the whole truth. And it, what I like about it, he said when they don't want to hear it, when they get up and leave, tell them the truth anyway. And when they don't, when they want to hear it. Why? It's the truth. And the reason why this nation is so messed up is because of leaders that do not have a fear of God. But you know what? It's coming. It's definitely coming, boy. That God, everybody ain't going to heaven. I want you to understand that. And that could be you. It could be me. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to follow this word. I'm going to stand on the gospel. Any question before we move on? I was teaching the gospel before you got here. I'm going to teach it after you leave, all right? Let's move on. I'm going to help. Now, notice it says, it says this. Woe unto you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You enter not in yourself, and then, and them that were entered in, you what? You hinder. You hinder. And listen, listen to the reaction here. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to what? Vehemently, that means forcefully. They got so angry, they start provoking him. Listen. 
it says, and to, let's read this again. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently, forcefully, and to provoke him to speak of many things. And then what they did, they went outside and waited on him. <laughs> they laid wait on You know what, what they were doing there? They, all of them didn't go outside. They sit there and they tried to catch him in a lie. That's what it means. They, they, were, they, they forgot about the truth. They were trying to catch him in a lie. One thing, you know, one thing I found out by Jesus, the devil, every battle that the devil fought with him, the devil lost it. Every battle that the devil fought with Jesus, he lost. Even when he thought that he had won because he was hanging on the cross. He found out that the Savior got up. He found out that the word was right. And that's what we want to teach y'all. The word is right. Any question before we move along? Yes, go ahead. them not entering in and mm -hmm. he talks about them hindering people mm -hmm. is that like people that say well I wouldn't go to that church because they tell them the truth and they're, yeah. hint and they're trying to stop people from coming to hear the word but they don't want to hear it right that's a, that's a hindrance hindrance okay what they do because they don't want the truth they'll keep you from hearing the truth because, see, if you hear the truth, you're going to find out who ain't telling the truth. <laughs> and then you're going to get up and walk out. Oh, I know what the devil is doing. You're going to find out who ain't telling the truth. You remember Simon? In Acts chapter 8. Everybody thought he was a man of God in Samaria until the truth came. Simon had the battle after Philip showed up. Can you imagine some woman telling you you thought was the truth all your life and then someone up show up and tell you the real truth. I don't care what you think. That thought going to run through your mind. Well, you know what? I was taught, well, he, well, she. That's what happened. That's why the Pharisees didn't like Jesus. That's why they, the lawyers didn't like Jesus. Why? They tried. They couldn't say he was lying. So they said, don't you go down there to that church. Don't you go down. Why? Because you go down there to that church. What? 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 Okay, if I go down to that church, what? They don't want to say, well, I'm going to be exposed. You just shouldn't go down there. And then that's when they start telling a lie. But don't worry about that. As long as you're telling the truth, as long God, God and his Christ is not begging not, not any of us to follow the truth. He presented to us and let us make the choice. The devil tried to make us do stuff, but the Lord don't. All right? Any question before we move on? Now, I want you to go to Jeremiah chapter 1, then we're going to come back here. We're going to move on. Jeremiah chapter 1. Your purpose here is to tell folk the truth, to let people know what the Bible says. That's what our purpose is. And nobody is going to tell Apostle Bush any different. I don't care how many of you believe false prophets or whoever you want to believe. I'm going to believe the truth. And the truth, the truth is going to, the truth, people, the truth sets me straight. That's right. The reason why 
I study this word and get in this word because I'm going to tell the truth. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, listen to this now. God says this. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Everybody got it? Verse 5, he says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou came forth out of the womb, I did what? And I ordained thee to what now? Now I want you to read verse 10. He says, See, I have this day set thee over the and over to root out, to destroy, to build and plant. Let, let me tell you something. I want you to listen. Now, in, in God's sight, in, 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 the Lord, in Jesus Christ's sight, In Jesus Christ's sight, preachers are the highest authority in the earth. Preachers are the highest authority in the earth. Even though the world don't recognize it, they still are. God raised up preachers to be a mouthpiece for him. God raised up Jesus, and Jesus raised up apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. The Lord don't care what your king or queen say when they wrong. The Lord don't care what your governor or whoever say when they wrong. And let me tell you this. I don't care how you feel about preaching. Those of us that's going to tell you the truth, God is going to honor us regardless of what you do. And at the end, God, that's why at the end, God is going to say to these nations that I sent preachers, I sent apostles and prophets, and you killed some of them, you tried to, you denied many of them, you rejected a whole lot of them, but I sent them anyway. And you know what? The Lord going to honor us that stand up for the truth. And those that don't, they're going to be punished in the lake of fire. If, that's what my Bible tells me. Any objection? Did anybody know anything different? Anybody know anything different? So if you got a preacher that's standing up preaching the truth, do you think God and his Christ, even the Holy Spirit, going to reject them? And except you, when you tell a lie, are you perverted? Uh-uh. Folk, it ain't going to happen that way. It just ain't going to happen that way. When we stand up, when a human being stand up and tell the truth, all heaven is working on their behalf. All of heaven is standing with them. All the everything from heaven is standing with them. When you stand up and tell a lie, you got the devil with you. Any questions? All right, let's move on since there's no question. All right, now. All right, let's go to the book of Corinthians, chapter 1. 1 Corinthians. So don't be afraid unless you want to be. And then don't accept anything we say unless it's from the word. And it's rightly divided. And that's, if you do that, that'll keep you out of place of deception, all right? It'll keep you. And don't let, listen, don't let child, you don't back, you don't back up because people say you wrong when you right. You don't back down. I don't back down from your challenges. Even your expression. Some of you look like, I don't back down from you. Now, hey, you show me different. If you say I'm wrong, prove it. But you better prove it by that word. I don't want to hear nothing about some best self. And I don't want to hear nothing about no amplified body. <laughs> if you got the Holy Spirit, you don't need an amplified Bible. That's what my Bible tells. Jesus didn't tell me the amplified Bible was going to lead and guide you in all truth. That ain't scripture. But I found out the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you in the That's what my Bible says. So you can, you can base your life on whatever junk you want to. I'm going to base my life on this word, all right? Any questions? All 
Oh, man. Okay. In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, listen to this, verse 26. It says, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to do what? God has chosen the weak things of the world too. Now let me show you something God chose <laughs> to confound the world. Same chapter, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish, but unto us which are saved, it is the power. Let me tell you something. If you just got saved, and there's a preacher that's been preaching for 40 years, and you speak the truth, and that preacher tell a lie, who you think God going on? <laughs> Y'all better... These folks done psyched y'all out. I don't hear preacher. She a preacher. No, wait a minute. If you a preacher, you got the word in you. If you a preacher, you're going to direct people the right way. If you've been sent, if you are an ambassador, if you are a messenger of Jesus Christ, you know what you're not going to do? Hide in the dark. You're going to come to the light so you can help lead people to them. And the light is Jesus Christ. So why you got to be afraid and upset? If you get mad at me because I told the truth, that don't mean I have to get miserable. I, that, if you don't like me because I told you the right way, that do not mean that I have to go in a state of depression. I don't have to do that. I can still pray for you and rejoice at the same time. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to praise the Lord. That's what you're supposed to do. Now, notice it says in verse 26 here of 1 Corinthians, it says, For you see your calling, brother, how that not many wise, not people, not many wise men after the flesh. That means these, back again, these folks in the world that are full of education and know Jesus, that's who he's talking about. They they seem to be wise in the world, but you know something? Their wisdom is coming to nothing. In other words, what used to work don't work because it didn't work in the first time. They just had a fool. Well, if it worked the first time, it ought to work the next time. See, the gospel brings the truth. Nothing but the truth. That's what the gospel brings. And when you start speaking the truth, not only demons and devils get upset, but people get upset. I wonder why. Because they got demons and devils in them. Whenever you get to a place where you don't want to hear the truth, it's because you are of the wrong spirit. All right? Any questions? We're giving all of y'all a chance to ask questions. All right? Okay. It says, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and to confuse mix up the world, and have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Okay, so to work to the world, Christians look weak because <laughs> they so forgiving. But the reason why we so forgiving is because we want to be forgiven. So we ain't holding no grudges. So I'm able to tell you the truth. Even if you frown up and still come back later on and tell you the same truth with the same love, the same joy and peace as the first time. You know why? Because of the love of God. Because we all supposed to do this. So if you're a real Christian, that means you have a desire for the truth and you are standing up to speak the truth. All right? Any questions before we move on? Now, I want you to go to the book of Psalms 9. Psalms 9, verse 1. Psalms 9, verse 1. 
Psalm 9. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank the Lord for his word. Book of Psalms 9. If I, if I get this true, Lord Jesus, I'm going to be able to see. In the book of Psalms 9, now I didn't write what I'm getting ready to read, but it's in here. And if you got an amplifier, I don't want to know what your amplifier, whatever you got said. In Psalms 9, verse 17, it says, the wicked shall be and all so that's telling me that all nations mean all nations so that's telling me if it's all nations man can't put no nation in heaven because the Lord is speaking to all nations. So that's also telling me that every Muslim should have Jesus Christ as their Savior. Arabia, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Sudan, that's telling me Iran, Iraq, all nations, all nations, their Savior should be Jesus. And if their Savior is not Jesus, they're not Christian. That's plain and simple. They have no knowledge of God. They're not Christian. Because, see, Christians told me you got to be Christ-like. Now, it says all, now that's what that, Psalms 9, 17. Said every nation that forget God is going to hell. And you know what? Hell is in there. But you're not supposed to talk about hell. It's in the Bible. <laughs> Listen. Psalm 9, 17. It says this. It says, the wicked shall be turned into hell. Now what that mean? You say you believe God, but you don't believe this. Well, what do you believe? Okay, what? Do, okay, <laughs> I do this one. Okay, if you don't, if you say you don't believe the Bible, well, tell me what you believe. What God said? Because if you ain't reading the Bible, God ain't said nothing to you. <laughs> Think for a minute. Okay, you tell me you believe God. You believe what God said. Okay, so what did he say? Because I just read some of So tell me how that worked with your worldly wisdom. Tell me how that worked. Oh, y'all wake up. Those of, those of you that are asleep, wake up. Wake up. Listen. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that for. Now, I wasn't around when this was written. But that's what this Bible says. Now, I want you to go to Psalms 14. If y'all take this word, this word going to help y'all. So y'all won't get all bent out of shape when y'all run, run across people that's being taught the wrong way. Psalms 14. Psalms 14, verse 2 says, The Lord is looking down from heaven upon the children of men. Let me start there for a minute. Well, maybe you might be thinking the Lord is taking a nap right now. Maybe he dozed off. Now it is. Or maybe you think the Lord only looks.
works down from nine to five. Or four to twelve. Or his shift tonight is twelve to eight. Maybe that's how you think it. Maybe that's how you think it. The Bible says the Lord looked down. Now this is what my Bible says here now from heaven, upon the children of men. So that's telling me, he's looking at me. For some reason, he'd have gotten specific now. He ain't just looking at building. He's looking at people in the building. He's looking at you right now. He knew everything in your heart. He's looking at you, Marcus. Pretenders. He's looking at everyone, those that are real. He's looking at every, every one of you in here. Is, your spirit is leaping now because of the truth. But then he's also looking at you, those that is not leaping <laughs> because of the truth. Listen to this. Okay, it says, The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there was any that did any and do what? That see, see God. So our leaders should be praying. You should be praying. One thing I learned about Christians that are real Christians, they constantly learn from the Word and they apply themselves to the Word. I heard a woman say on Fox this morning that we all children of God. Well, when she said that, I know she lied. Because we are not all children of God. How you know? The Bible said we're not. We were all created by God. But we are not all children of God. What you mean? If we were all children of God, there would be no repentance. There would be nobody to have to be born again. Why? Because you're a child of God. So I understood her to say that out of her ignorance. And let me say this to you. Just because she white don't make no difference. And to me, she ain't white anyway. Because I don't see white paint. Just like I don't see black paint. Now, I don't care what you say. I don't see them both. And if I take black paint and put it beside every one of you, there's going to be a shade different. Or if I take white paint, and put it beside every one of you. There's going to be a shade different. But that's what we've been accustomed to, white and black. So, I've come to this conclusion that man will lie without God. And they walk in their lies because they don't love the truth. That's why December 25th, I'm not looking for no Santa Claus. I'm not looking for something that's not there. And just because you got a fat suit or beard or whatever, if you Santa Claus, I want to see you sail through the sky, not in an airplane, not in a helicopter, not in a B-1 bomber or F-14 or whatever. I don't want to see you in a Boeing 747 or whatever. I want to see you in a sleigh. And I don't want to see you with a Chevy or a Ford engine. You can have eight cylinders, but every one of them better have horns. And it better be eight of them. Until I see that, I'm not going to believe in your lie. I'm not going to walk in your lie. I'm not going to. The Bible said, stop lying to each other and tell the truth. Any question before we move on? Ooh, Jesus. Lord, this is just good, isn't it? I know it is. I know absolutely it is because I read it. And the, the Lord told me everything he did was just good. It was just good. Now, let's see what 
what time we got. We got some more. We're trying to help y'all. I hope y'all get. Oh, it's not even 8 o'clock yet. It's not even 8 o'clock. I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 29 verse. Well, let's go to Isaiah 29 verse. This is what the Holy Spirit got. One thing about the word, the word, the word strengthens me and it helps me. When I get in the word, I don't care who said a lie. When I get in the word and find out I didn't lie, uh-huh, I told the truth. I told the truth. And I want to tell people the truth, that what the Bible says about what's going to happen in our future and what's happening now. Isaiah chapter 29. Somebody brought up about them voting in, in the, over there in Florida, you know. It's amazing how you find boats. It's amazing, boy. It's amazing when you want to lie or deceive and stuff like that. But listen, let me tell you something. If you are, if, if, okay. if you bold enough to stand up for your lie, I'm bold enough to stand up for the truth. I ain't going to back down because of you. I'm going to stand up. The Lord gave me the right to tell the truth. Isaiah chapter, that's liberating, y'all. Chapter 29, everybody got it? All right, verse 10 it says, For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and has closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers, has he covered. Now let me show you what the Lord was saying to Israel. Okay, the reason why these folk believe these lies so much cause a deep sleep is on them. When you sleep, you 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 are unaware of what's going on around you. you. When you are in a deep sleep, you don't even know where you at. And what lies does, when you believe a lie, it lures you into a spell of deception. You actually begin to walk in, you actually begin to believe yourself a lie. And then you start accepting that lie as the truth. And when you accept that lie as the truth, the next stage is you begin to walk in that lie. Then the next stage, you begin to promote that lie. That means you, need, you begin to tell other folk the lie. You don't left the stage of believing the lie because you got that down. I believe the lie. I believe the lie to a point that I have deceived myself. So now you cover with deception. And then you start walking it out. Then you start telling other folk that lie. And to you, the lie is the truth. But that's to you. That's to you. That's what you do. That's what you do. So the scripture says this will happen, some of the things that happened to Israel back in the day, all right? Now, I want you to go over to the book of Romans. Book of Romans. Chapter 13. Now, Christian, as a Christian, you have a right to tell any and everybody the truth. Let me say it again. You have a right to tell any and everybody the truth. Nowhere in the Bible, matter of fact, the Bible says this, that those that do not tell the truth, the wrath of God coming upon you. That's in Romans chapter 1. That's what the Bible says now, okay? I'm not, you know, I hope y'all don't get mad at me. But if y'all, I'm hoping you don't. But if you do, so be it. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher power, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Now let me explain that scripture. First of all, it's telling everybody that all of us need to be under the authority of the higher power. But it didn't 
to stop there. That means higher authority. But the higher authority it's talking about is of God. So if you are jacked up leader and you jacked up by the devil, I don't have to bow down to you. I don't have to be subject to you. So if you're telling me something to do that the Bible tells me not to do, I don't have to obey you. And I don't. And nowhere in the Bible will you find out that God told anybody to obey somebody that was telling them, leading them, or lying to them of the devil. You, never, you won't find that at all. Now, I heard this week, <laughs> I heard, I was told by a member here that this preacher, so-called preacher, said, when you in Rome, you do as the Romans do. Now, I've heard that from a whole lot of preachers. And what they do, they use that scripture to justify their walk against the Lord. That's what, okay, let me see. Okay. The, okay, every one of you know, you know, every one of you, now every one of you, if you got, even if you got common sense, you might not be saved. How many of you believe homosexuality is right? How many of you believe God is okay with it? Transvestite. Huh? Nobody here believes. I wonder how many of you on Facebook believe that, that homosexuality is right. Well, then you ought to find a scripture in the Bible that says right. Somewhere in the Bible, it ought to say it's right. Now, in your looking, I tell you what you're going to find. You're going to find out it says it's wrong. Now, when it says here, for there is no power but of God, no authority, the powers that be are ordained of God. What it's saying is the leadership, the hierarchy of it, God ordained it. God, just like Jesus called apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, God has ordained for men and women to help rule. You know, be honest with you, but now God ordained me. I'm lost. Lord Jesus. We're going to have to get into that. That's a whole nother subject. All right? That's a whole, I'm going to tell you. you now, that don't mean women can't rule. I'm not saying that. But I want you to understand what God did in the beginning. You know? Okay. We have to come back to that. Some of y'all look at me kind of twisted like. <laughs> Listen to this. It says this. It says, Whosoever therefore resists the power. Notice it says, Whosoever therefore resists the power. Resist the. So this is telling me that the power. It's the ordinance of God. Meaning this. The power is the word of God. So whoever resists the word of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So wait a minute. This is telling me that if there's a lead, God don't pick every leader. Every leader that God, every leader that's in position, most of them, we do it. This is telling me that if God put a leader in place, that leader is going to be based on how he or she follows the word of God. Because the power is the ordinance of God. And the ordinance is the word of God. So if you resist the power, you resist the ordinance of God. It's just like if you resist the lamb, you resist Jesus. If you resist the word, you resist Jesus. If you res res resist God, Jesus, you resist the word. So wait a minute. If you're telling me you're a leader and you're telling me to do something, you 
saying God put you there. But you're trying to tell me to do something against God's word, and you're telling me I got to obey you? The Bible tells me I don't. So I'm going to subject myself to the word and let you subject yourself to God. Because the scripture says, if you resist the power, you resist, you fall into damnation. So how in the world can you tell me that a president that leads people into homosexuality gives the right for people to walk in homosexuality is of God? How can you tell and be a Christian? How can you tell, how can, how can you? Okay, you don't convince yourself. You don't convince, well, everybody ain't right. That's why we got the word. That's why we got the word. Some people don't want to get right. But how can you tell me that a leader that was raised up by God going to lead people into wickedness? Tell me how that's going to be. Can any of you explain it to me? If you out there on Facebook, can you explain it to me? How can God raise up a leader and give that leader permission to lead people into abomination? Because, see, this country going to be cursed. And I don't care what you think. Nowhere have I seen in the Word where a nation of people that had God as their God go through destruction like what's happening now. I haven't seen it. Every nation, from the Garden of Eden until now, even Israel, when they obeyed God, they were blessed. They were the nation to be reckoned with. It's when they disobeyed God, they got punished. So how how can you tell me, how can you justify a person, a people, that call themselves leaders, but do not have the fear of God, do not obey this word? I want, I want any of you, any, explain that to me and say God is in charge. The Bible tells me God has the right to control the heart of a king. So how in the world can that be? Can anybody tell me? Luke chapter 23 right quick. Wait, no. Stay here. Thank you. Still in Romans. Verse 3. For the rulers are not a terror to good Wait a minute. But to what? Well, this is talking about a certain kind of ruler. Because he's saying this kind of ruler, the rulers he's talking about, do not promote evil. That's what, I don't care what Al Sharpton or whoever else said. I don't care what Oprah said. I don't care what Donald Trump said, or any of them. I'm, I'm telling you what Jesus said. <laughs> How can a ruler be a terror to good works when the Bible said they are not? But to evil they are. So wait a minute here. Now, this word is giving me some good sense. And I'm supposed to renew my mind with this word. I'm supposed to think like the word and not like the world. Because the world is confused. The world is messed up. So how can a leader that was ordained by God, that is approved of God, tell folk stuff that leads them away from God? Anybody else to that? Anybody? Oh, man. Jesus. All right. Let's read it again. But rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Will thy then not be afraid of the power? Do that which
riches, and thou shalt have praise. For he is the minister of who? To thee for what? But if thou do that which is That's why they're afraid. For he bears not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God. Talking about the ruler. A revenger to execute wrath upon him that. So that means that our government is supposed to be for righteousness. It's supposed to promote the victim and not the criminal. But look how far it done got. That's how these judges are corrupt. We got some of the most corrupt judges. They're not really judges. They're not. In God's sight, they're not. They're not. But it's all over the place. So just like judges, we got preachers that's going to give an account for what they say and do when they lead people away from God, away from Christ. That's just going to happen. So whatever your vote is, it don't matter with God. What matters with the Lord is righteousness. What are you doing? So if the question was asked tonight to this body, how many of you are scared to stand up for what's right? Don't raise your, raise your hand. And if you, in your spirit, if you don't do it, I would ask the Lord to help me. I would ask the Lord to help me walk in freedom. So just like the wicked, if the wicked can parade what they believe, if the wicked, if you wicked and you can parade what you believe, I sure can be that light on the hill that shines what I believe. And I ain't bowing down to you. I'm going to stand up for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to stand up for what's right, the word. That's what you're supposed to do. Every one of you in you. And if you're a Christian, and for those of you that's these, okay, these folks on Facebook, on everybody else's book, that get offended because you tell the truth, the Lord ain't going to punish you for that. So why are you going to be afraid? Daddy ain't going to whoop you. He's going to bless you because you stood up for the truth. Your reward is not based on who receives it. It's based on who you follow. And that's Jesus. That's Jesus. So my real friends, my real friends are those that are born again. All right. I, how can two walk together? How can two walk together if they be agreed, if they're not agreed, if they don't have the same spirit? So in this life, I want to prepare for the next life. Now, either way, you you preparing for the next life. Because there's two parts. There's heaven and there's hell. Heaven, you go up. Hell, you go down. Where do you want to go? Just because you want to go up, it don't mean you're going to get there. Now you got some information. You got a road map to get there, and that's that word. So what I decided to do is make the word my best friend. <laughs> make the word my friend. And then the word is going to determine who else is going to be my friend. That don't mean I'm going to hate nobody. But I'm going to make sure that I don't compromise my life, give up my right to go to heaven because I want to hang with you in hell. Let me say it again. I'm going to make sure I don't give up my right to go to heaven because I want to hang with you in hell. That ain't happening. Let me say it again. I want to make sure I don't give up my God-given Jesus Christ right to 
and go to heaven because I want to hang with you in hell. I'm not going to do that. Any questions? No question. Everybody quiet. Everybody quiet. Well, if there's no question, we going to boy, there was no question. Not even on Facebook tonight. Man, either they cut us off. <laughs> or they had nothing to say. Here's the truth. Here's the truth. Now, um, I want you to understand this. You're gonna run into preachers, just like Lightfoot ran into, that Claim to know the word. If you run on a preacher that says Apostle Bush is telling you a lie, I can't stand for no other preacher. Lying to you, you ask them, what scripture can you base that on? What what script what 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 scripture? Give me a script, give me a word, give tell me what he said. I want to know what scripture. You got to be. I don't want to hear your opinion. I want to hear what scripture you got. And then if you want to, you can give me that scripture. And I'll look over. I'll, I'll look over and see. But I want you to understand this. Stop letting people stop you from telling the truth because they don't want to hear it. Stop letting people stop you from telling the truth because they say you lying when you're not. Don't let people make you afraid. They go to sleep just like you. They go through trials and tribulations just like you. All you got to do is stand up for Jesus. And I found out if you love Jesus enough, you're going to stand up for his word. But if you don't love Jesus, you won't stand up for his word. You won't. You just won't. And it doesn't matter who you are. Get in that word, and you walk out that word if you want to go to heaven. If you don't, you don't have to. Right? If you want to. And then rejoice when you speak the truth. When that word rolls out of your mouth, and it's rightly divided. Thank you, Lord. Just like that, front, that air condition just come on. Let it roll out. And then be glad. You know what? Say to yourself, I told the truth. And then get your dance on because you told the truth. Because anybody can lie. Anybody can tell a lie. But everybody don't tell the truth. When you stand, that's why when a scripture come out of my mouth, I don't care whether ministry, here in the street or wherever. I'm thanking the Lord for giving me the courage and the wisdom and knowledge to tell the whole truth. I know everybody ain't talking about Santa Claus, other Republicans or Democrats, but I couldn't give a hill of beans because they need deliverance just like you. And I found out that most of these people in this area that says you don't mix politics with church, they said, voted for Hardy Davis. Now, I thought you said, I, th I, th I thought you, I thought you, I know some of you black folk in here don't like it. But I couldn't give a hill of beans what you don't like. Maybe some of you white folk don't, well, Caucasian folk don't like. Well, I'm going to have to say, a uh, Negro, uh, what if you said, no, what that what? Color? What do you want to say, Negro color? Huh? I mean, I'm asking, she the one said no. I'm asking her, are you Negro, color, black, Afro, okay, Af who said that? Afro-American. Af but then everybody ain't got Afro. So where we go from here? 
Huh? Y'all make up your mind. Jesus. Jesus. Make up your mind. Why not say a child of God? I'm a companion of all them that fear God and keep his word. Why not say that? Folk, it's a blessing to be saved. Even in the midst of press, when people are looking at you cockeyed, cross-eyed, man, it's a blessing to be saved. To be talking about Jesus in this season and time. Because I'm going to tell you, the Lord is blessing his people. Now, any question before we close? Any of you going through any kind of persecution because you're standing on the word? Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, when you're when you're on Facebook and you're you're posting and you're bold about what you're what you post, and then someone makes a comment, then they get upset when you come back with the word, and then others join in and it's like a big gang and jump on top of them, and so then they get mad at you and say, "Tell your friends to stop commenting." I'm going to sue you for harassment. You know what you tell them to do? Call CNN. Because <laughs> you did what you're supposed to do. You did just what you're supposed to do. Let me tell you something. I'm, you know what I do? I rejoice. You know, even when some of you in here get mad at me, I'm rejoicing. You mad at me, but I'm praising the Lord. Why? Because I told you the truth. You can go home and read it for yourself. And I don't, if, even if you cut the pages out, if you cut the pages out, if you put them back together, it's going to go back to the same place. When you tell, what we're trying to do is get you to understand why you're here. And that is to serve Jesus. That's to tell the people the truth. Them folk out there that don't want to hear you, you got to tell them. And the thing, you can't go, Lord, they don't want to hear me. He said, I know, I, I know they didn't want to hear you start with, but I told you to tell them anyway. Then after you done whine and I'll never do it again, or Jeremiah said, no, I ain't doing it no more. After you done did all that, then he said, go back out there and tell them. Then you back out there again. They're going to call you devils. They're going to call you all kind of things. But one thing they can't tell you, if you didn't lie, they can't tell, prove you lied. They can't tell you, you lied unless they lied. <laughs> All right? That's why you need to study to show yourself approved unto God. Don't be ashamed. Rightly divide the word of truth. And you know, I look at it this way. At the end, we're with the winning. I mean, we done won the championship. We already won. We already, if you hang with Jesus, you already won. If you stay with Jesus, you already stay on the team. You already won, all right? Any other questions before we close? I'd rather go through hardship with Jesus. Go with you. You can't help me through nothing going through hardship. Go ahead. I had a, a incident on Facebook also talking mm -hmm. with family members. Okay. Um, where they brought up, I mean, my past. Okay. Um, and at first, there, and I'm gonna be honest, there were some sisters from the sanctuary, like Prophet was just saying, that jumped in, but initially it was just myself and an elder member in my family that at that point I respected there was almost when they started bringing up my past there there started be, to be like a shame that kind of rose in because of what they were saying and basically I understood the spirit that was leading them was trying to bring me to a place of shame was that to shut me to shut you down you know something um, one thing you ought to look at it like this Okay, what you used to do, you can't deny it. Don't even try. But think about the power that's keeping you from doing what you used to do. 
and ask them, won't they walk in that same power? Jesus said it this way in St. John 1.12, as many as received him, to them gave he to become son. Why don't you come with me? Let me tell you the reason why I'm not doing it. Because I got Jesus. And don't folk I hate they ever mention you. <laughs> they, you know, I, I got to go there and hang up on you some of them. That's what you do. Don't ever deny what you used to do if you did. Tell them the reason why you're not doing it now. Let me tell you about J-E-S-U-S, the Christ. That's what you do. For the rest of your life, people, there's no judge, there's no president, there's no sinner, there's no preacher, there's no apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher that can stop you from going to heaven when you fall in that word. I don't care how mad they get with you. I don't care how much philosophy, theology, they come up. I don't care how many books they wrote. For those of you that are afraid, are we still on? Okay. For those of you here that are afraid and out there, y'all need help. Because I know some of you coming here, you're hearing this word, ain't living none of it out there. You're scared. You let the devil just make fear come all over you. You know, when I was working at SRS, my manager, I gave him the word. I don't let no worldly boss take authority over me like some of you all do. That's why you ain't got no power. Let me say something to you. The same boldness that give you boldness to stand up for the truth is called power. If you don't stand up for the truth, it's because you have no power. It's because you absolutely have no power. This, those of you that stand up for the word, it's because you have some power. The word of God is power working in you. If the word can't promote you to speak it, how the word going to cause you to lay hands on somebody to be healed? When you don't have enough power to even speak the truth. Huh? The word itself is power. That's why the, the, the majority of the church world ain't got no power. It's just a religious organization that's not doing what the Lord said do. That's what it is. I'm just telling you the truth. Look around. If you ain't blind, even if you're blind, you still see it ain't, well, ain't nothing going on. When you, the same power that caused you to speak the word caused you to walk in power. That's how it works. When you allow your flesh, the devil of people, decide to bring fear upon you, when you know what the truth is, but you hold back, read the book of Romans chapter 1. It said the wrath of God is com coming against all those that hold back the truth. Put that on the screen up there. Oh, it's already up there. It's in your Bible. That people, it was in there for a reason. So don't be a, we're trying to, we we're not trying to stop you from speaking the truth. We're encouraging you to speak the truth. Like Paul told Timothy, stir up that gift in you. Don't worry about if people don't like you if you tell the truth. People, you can buy your own turkey, your own ham. You can. You can sit down and eat in peace, being saved, born again. And that's why I thank the Lord for this ministry. Why? Because we ain't bound by no denomination. This ministry is not built on denomination. It's built on the gospel, the word. I, we have one law, and that's the word of Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. Any questions tonight? I know some of you still struggling, scared, and there's freedom in Freedom in just being free and being delivered. at my job at my job it's a situation to where I, 
no one speaks to me, no one includes me, nobody interacts with me. So I still walk in love and speak toward, speak to everybody. But even when I speak, they don't say anything back. And we had a meeting where a coworker said she didn't like me because of my religion, because of Jesus. Um, so I still walk in love towards them. Um, and for instance, today, the supervisor, he's gay. He um, was looking for Let me stop it for a minute, okay? You just said something. She said she didn't like you because of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, she have a good companion. The devil don't like you because of Jesus either. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So today, I mean, they put me in an area by myself. Like, literally, it's no one over there with me. It's like I'm on an island alone, and everybody else is together. So he came over there because he had to look for keys. He was tearing up the drawers, slamming them. It was almost like he was mad he had to come on my side. I had the key. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, so I said, um, so what you looking for? I said, what you looking for? He said, oh, the key to this drawer. He said it in an attitude. I said, oh, well, hmm. I got up, unlocked the drawer. Oh, I have the key. And he was like, oh. I said, oh, you forgot you gave me the key? He was like, yeah. No That's thank you, no nothing. Um, he needed help with appeal count because we uh, it's a pain management place where I work at. Nobody would come and help. I walked over there, helped him count the pills, signed off on it, everything. No thank yous, no nothing. But I still walk in love towards them. So at first it started with a small group of people, but now it's the whole building. I mean, I can walk through and say, good morning, everybody. Have a blessed day. Nothing. And the ones who do speak back is with anger. So is that like because I'm not giving in to it? Is it like That's it. That's okay. it. I guarantee you they go to somebody's church, the majority of them. They do. Go to somebody's church, but they ain't saved. They're not saved. Let me, that's why I'm telling all of you here and on Facebook. The Bible says the unsaved people have enmity against God and his Christ. That's Romans chapter 8. Meaning this, when you ain't saved, you can't stand Jesus. And you can't stand those that represent Jesus out there. Now, in here, you can pretend, you can get along, you can even promote it. But once you get back out there, because you are a hypocrite, you can't stand it. And that's why I do not judge people's salvation on their mouth or the crowd. Salvation is judged by the word. If you are a real Christian, if you are born again, you have a love for Jesus Christ. You don't care whether it's spoken on your job. You don't care where. When you hear the name of Jesus, you are attracted to it. When you're not saved, you, you repel. That name repels you because you ain't saved. You ain't saved. You ain't going to heaven because your preacher or your pastor said you're going. You're going to heaven because the word said. If you don't meet the qualification of the word, you're going to hell. And I don't, that's why I, I don't mean no harm. I'm going to say this way. Um, I'm, I'm, let me say, white preachers don't bother me either. Because, see, black preachers have a problem with white preachers. They like to bow down to them. I don't bow down to none of them. Not any of them. Let me say it again. I don't bow down to no white preacher or black preacher. No red preacher. I don't bow down to any of them. I don't have to. The word is the word. My dependency is on Jesus. That's where it is. If you don't like it, I don't have the problem. <laughs> Hope you got that. Because I don't. I don't have the problem. I like it. Like what? Jesus is my mouth. That's right. Some folks, no, I don't do that. I'm just going to tell the truth. And those of you that want to receive it, great. You're going to go to heaven. Those of you that don't, you're going to meet your maker. That's what you're going to do, regardless. Whether you come here or well. And that's why uh, us as preachers, all of us preachers, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, every one of us is going to give an account of what we teach and preach. Every one of us. And it's not based on whether you accept the, the people. It's based on what the Lord told us. That's what my Bible tells me. So you can't control me. You're not going to control me. That was the way the old preachers preached. When I said old preachers, the beginning preachers in the book of Acts. That's what they did. 
they told the truth. Any other questions? Go ahead. I'm trying to help y'all. Yes. Apostle, the same question that Sister Regina had about when your family members, but what if it's a saved, a saved person say to you, I'm glad I didn't do what you did. I've never been that way. You say the same thing about Look at what the power of God is doing through me now. You let yeah, them you tell them here. Yeah. If they say, yes, how do you know they say? They go here. I mean, well, <laughs> wait, 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 they're wait, supposed wait, wait. to be saved. Oh, <laughs> I know. Listen, was, okay, hold, hold. Just because you come here don't mean you are saved. If you're walking out the word, like, okay, we say like John said, to the Pharisees, bringing forth proof of righteousness. That's what you do. All right. Okay. okay. But you tell them the same thing. That's what you do. All right. Yes, Pastor. Thank okay. You. Thank God. If they hear tonight, they heard you. Don't don't tell them whether they hear or not, because somebody somebody's trying to figure out who it was. Somebody's trying to figure out who it okay, who okay, who it was. All right. Any other questions? We're trying to help y'all so y'all can live. And your life don't your life shouldn't be based on people. It should be based on Jesus. That's what we're trying to get. Based on Jesus. That's how the early, early church made it. Based on Jesus. Not people, but Jesus. The world try, religion trying to get you on people. The Lord trying to get you on Jesus. That's the difference, all right? Because people were flaky boy. Jesus is not. Any questions? Where we go. Anybody have any problems, sadness, depression, fear? Now let me tell you something. When you go back out there, when you get around the crowd, if you feel that little hump, you're too scared to talk about Jesus, but you talk about everything else. <laughs> Even when they bring up the turkey, I talk about the one that created it. All right, we're going to have our announcement. We're going to let you go. If no questions, we're going to we talk about the one that created the turkey, Jesus Christ. Go ahead.